Okay, I'm talking just now about the utility box wrap on West 4th Street. There you'll see an image uh, from the early 1940s of the Farmer's Supermarket, a grocery store that opened in the 1930s and was operated as such until about 1967. After it closed, the building was divided into bays that housed, among others, a furniture store and a hairstyling salon. The building was torn down in the 1980s and is now part of the DMACC campus's parking lot. The Carnegie Library, located at 400 First Avenue West, on a site now occupied by Medicap Pharmacy, was built in 1902 with financing coming from local citizens and a grant from Andrew Carnegie. One-story additions in 1959, 1961, and 1963 wrapped around the south and east sides of the building. The old Carnegie Library was torn down in 1993. Next, we see a 1961 image of the Maytag Plant 1. This was taken, I think, at the time of the dedication of the headquarters building. Maytag Plant 1 was where component parts were manufactured for um, the washing machines. And the property covered over 29 acres with its numerous buildings and had a floor area of more than a million square feet. Wyatt's 66 was located at 326 First Avenue West. In 1963, when Mahan's Phillips 66 gas station was built, its triangular canopy epitomized mid-century modern design. Shortly after the new station opened, it was sold and became known as Wyatt's 66. The business changed owners several times before it ceased operating about 1980. Larchwood Florists purchased the station building and in 1981 added the two-story retail building that sits in front of the station. The original station building is now home to First Choice Realty. On the West 3rd Street box, we see the factory district as viewed from the courthouse looking northwest. This wraparound photo was taken between 1936 and 39. The Maytag factory complex is on the left and the automatic washer company is on the right. The smallest water tower in the middle belongs to the One Minute Washing Machine Company. The commercial buildings in the foreground are located along North 2nd Avenue West. In the bottom right corner of the photo, you see Santon's Market with the Tyler Photography Studio on second floor. This building, constructed in 1875, is known historically as the Jack and Jill Store, named for the business that operated in this location from 1952 to 1985. Today, the farmer's wife occupies this corner building. Looking west across West 2nd Street North, on the corner is the C.M. Hinsdale Building, which dates to around the year 1900. Longtime Newton residents will remember tenants such as Sears Roebuck in the 1950s, Tyler Studio from 1967 to 1988, Hunter Chiropractic, and the current owner and occupant, Coonan Chiropractic. The next building, constructed around 1884, contains two storefronts, both of which have had a variety of tenants over the years. Many of them were restaurants or bars, with names like Stevens Grill, the Davis Cafe, the Spot Tavern, and the Mint Tavern. The Knights of Columbus Meeting Hall has been located on second floor of the building since 1954. On the north side of the utility box, the building at the far left is the three-story Churchill Hotel. To the right of the hotel, several cars sit in a parking lot that once held the building known as Lister's Opera House. On the south and east sides of the utility box, we see Vine Street looking south from North 2nd Avenue West. 
The view on the east side of this utility box clearly illustrates how Vine Street got its name. Around the time this photo was taken, between 1911 and 1918, Newton Street names were changed and Vine Street became West Third Street. In 1911, S.F. Neal commissioned the building of his family's home at the northeast corner of Vine Street and West Main, where Clem and Mackey Insurance is now. His building, Neal's Bakery, which also made and sold ice cream, was located in a building in his backyard, where the county attorney's building currently sits. By 1918, Mr. Neal was operating a grocery store out of the building. He later closed the grocery and concentrated on making ice cream, and in 1925, he sold his business to the Hutchinson Ice Cream Company of Des Moines. In this photo, you see the bakery and the west side of the Neal home, which was replaced by a Sinclair gas station in 1924. Continuing south across First Avenue, partially hidden by vines and the automobile, is the building that housed the fire station on ground floor and Newton City Hall upstairs. That building is still standing with the ground floor storefront now occupied by Eclipse. We're looking now at the West 2nd Street box and starting on the north side of the square. This photo was taken sometime between 1920 and 1928 and we're looking northeast. From the left side of the photo, the Boston store was in the building now occupied by Varieties from about 1917 to the, to the early 1920s. To the east of that, the Dewar Mercantile Company probably wins the award for the most ornate building in the downtown. Next to it, the Taylor Building was built in 1885. George Taylor sold flour, feed, and grain here for approximately 20 years. Marshall and Johnston's Hardware, later Marshall Hardware, operated here for many years. And for about the last 15 years, Uncle Nancy's has been serving coffee, pastries, and lunches to their loyal customers from this building. Across the alley to the east, the Scharf Building, <clears throat> built in 1892, has housed a drugstore, the Strand Movie Theater, J.J. Newberry Variety Store, Sears and Roebuck, two TV and appliance businesses, and since 2006, the Elliott Salon and Day Spa. At the east end of the block, the FNNB Bank Building was built in 1920, when three buildings were demolished following a fire. Since this photo was taken, the bank has purchased and refaced two of the buildings which adjoined it on the west. Moving to the south half of the square, this photo was taken 1910 or 11, and it's looking east from what is now the bank plaza. In 1911, the small building on the right was home to Jack's Millinery business, which was operated by Nan and Edith Jack. It was torn down shortly after this photo was taken to make way for a new Jasper County Savings Bank that was being built on the corner of the intersection. That building was torn down around 1970 when the current U.S. Bank building was constructed immediately to the south. The two-story building with the bay window upstairs housed a series of shoe stores from as early as 1910 until the 1990s. Larimer and Clark's shoe store was replaced by Horn's shoes in 1925. Brown's shoe fit opened in this location in 1959 and remained there until the middle 1990s. Since 2000, this building has been home to Mattis Chiropractic. To the east, or left in this photo, the three-bay skiff block building was constructed in 1889 for Vernon W. Skiff, who later endowed the Skiff Memorial Hospital. At the time this photo was taken, the furniture store of Baum and McLaughlin occupied the western two-thirds of the building, and the eastern third of the building housed the Carrier Dry Goods store. In 1935, a coast-to-coast -coast store opened in the eastern third of the building and remained there until 1980. For most of that time, coast-to-coast -coast was operated by Ed and Gerda Searsland. In 1980, 
Coast to Coast's new owners, Bob Marshall and Ivan Diamond, moved the building to the west part of the building into the space vacated by Spurgeon's department store, which had been there since the 1940s. In the last 20 plus years, Brown's Shoe Fit, followed by two bridal shops, have occupied the western two thirds of the building, and H&R Block has been located in the eastern third of the building. Moving to the Harding Pangborn building, this 1929 photo looks southwest from the courthouse. In the early part of the 20th century, Dr. Mary R. Harding owned the building on the southwest corner of First Avenue West and West 2nd Street. When she died, she left the building to her longtime assistant, Nellie Pangborn, and it became known as the Pangborn Building. From, the from 1928 to 1957, the Smart Shop, which sold women's wear and some children's clothing, occupied the corner location. Just south of the corner was a barber shop operated by a series of owners. In 1961, the old building was torn down and replaced with a modern one-story building faced in yellow brick to harmonize with the buildings directly west of it. Those buildings had been destroyed by fire in 1954 and rebuilt with a light-colored synthetic stone facing. The first street box begins with a photo of the Iowa Mercantile Company, also known as the Big Store. It was located at 101 First Avenue East. Built in 1899, this store was started by the owners of three separate businesses in town who combined their merchandise to form one large department store that sold furniture, dry goods, medicines, groceries, and a lot of other products. In 1929, Lowerman Brothers purchased the business and continued to operate it until it was destroyed by fire in August of 1931. After the remains were cleared away, for the next 18 years, downtown Newton was left with a large hole in the ground, surrounded by a protective fence, until the current building was constructed on the site in 1949. Its first occupants were a Thriftway grocery store and a bowling alley in the basement. Later, a series of department stores and a mini mall followed. PJ's Deli is now the building's main occupant. Across the street at the left side of this picture is the Alfrey Building, now called the Jewel Building. The portion of the building that you see here was constructed in 1917. The next photo showing a portion of the south side of the square was taken in 1884 by 15 year old Fred Clifford, the son of a professional photographer. On the right, you see the Gorell building, which now houses relics. It was constructed in 1880 for Dr. Joseph R. Gorell. Longtime Newton residents will remember this building as the J.C. Penney department store, which was in this location from 19, 1922 to about 1990. The enameled steel panels that now cover the upper story of the building were placed there in 1948. The building on the left, which in 1884 was the Philadelphia Clothing House, was drastically remodeled in 1931. From that year until 1969, this building was occupied by Iowa Southern Utilities. The Smith Law Office is located here now. Next, in this 1935 photo of the east side of the square, we see the F.W. Woolworth 5 and 10 cent store, Roswell's Candy and Confectionery store and luncheonette, and the Hotel Maytag. From the 1920s, until about 1990, Woolworths was located in the northernmost section of the Alfrey Building, now known as the Jewel Building. This portion of the building was constructed in 1918, one year after the original section was built. That same year, Cliff Roswell constructed his building adjoining Woolworths. In the 1930s and early 1940s, Roswell's was a popular place for the high school crowd to hang out. After the Roswells retired, Frank Pearson operated his pharmacy in this building from 1953 to 1970. His successors retained the Pearson name on the drugstore until 1998. 
The last full-time occupant of this building was the Moda High Women's Clothing Store from 2005 to 2015. Although it may look older, the Hotel Maytag is the youngest building on the east side of the square. It opened in December of 1926 and boasted that it was the first hotel west of the Mississippi River whose rooms were fully air conditioned and all of its 100 rooms and apartments were connected to a centralized radio unit so that the occupants could listen to either jazz or classical music. The hotel's ornate ballroom and banquet hall could seat 366 diners. On the west side of the hotel, the ground floor had room for several stores, a coffee shop or restaurant, and the Capitol Theater. The upper stories of the west side had office space for professionals. Before, between 2017 and 2019, the hotel underwent a $16 million rehabilitation to repair and restore the building to its former glory. We are on East 2nd Street talking about the utility wrap there. The Rainbow Service Station was located at 121 First Avenue East. This was the first gas station in this location. It operated from 1922 to 1928. The station was rebuilt or remodeled in 1937 and from 1938 until his retirement in about 1980. The business was known as Lefty's Mobile Gas Station. That reference, of course, is to Raymond Lefty Sprague. It was later remodeled into retail space and since 2000 has been the home of Trends Hair Salon, also known as the Rialto Theater, is located at 114 to 118 First Avenue East. This three-section building was constructed in 1917 for John P. Clarkson, one of a family of tailors, and his sister Ella, who was a milliner. The west bay of this building has been a barber shop since 1922, the Rialto Barber Shop, and during the 1920s, it boasted of a mezzanine where bathtubs were available for patrons. But it was the center section operating as the Rialto Theater from 1917 to 1954 that it was best known. The Rialto made the transition from silent movies to talkies and survived the depression by bringing in live and sometimes local entertainment, even boxing matches. But with as many as four movie theaters operating simultaneously downtown in the early 1930s, the popularity of this theater, the oldest of the four, declined over time and it began showing second run movies on Friday through Mondays only. Although the theater itself still remains, its open lobby and ticket counter area was enclosed as office space in 1970. The YMCA building uh, was located at 221 East 2nd Street North. That's now a parking lot behind Kayla's dance studio. Newton citizens collected enough money in a short period of time to finish paying for Skiff Memorial Hospital and Mr. Maytag made good on his promise to build a YMCA for the community. The building was constructed in 1924, standing just south of what was then the Central Junior High School building. The YWCA was incorporated into the building several decades later. The Y boasted of a swimming pool and bowling alley in the basement and a gathering space and snack bar as well as a game room on the main floor. When the junior high school students had open lunch hour, many students would spend their time at the snack bar and then head back to class. We're looking at the 
utility wrap on East 3rd Street. Owl Lunch and Hamilton Glass, located in the 200 block of First Avenue East. Now the parking lot for Hamilton Glass, the Owl Lunch was a small four seat lunch counter in the 1950s and 1960s. I always assumed that it was called the Owl Lunch because Olin W. Lambert ran the place for a period of time that it stood for his initials, but no, it was because it was open all night. It was a lunch counter that was open all night. The food must have been good because no matter what time you came, it was hard to find an empty seat. Hamilton Glass and Radiator has been in its building since 1947. The second Jasper County Courthouse was constructed in the center of the Newton Square in 1857 and 1858. It stood until 1909 when work on the current courthouse was begun. Streets around the courthouse were brick by this time and by the time that the photo on the wrap was taken. Skiff Memorial Hospital, 204 North 4th Avenue East. The hospital named for Mary Frances Skiff the wife of its benefactor, Vernon W. Skiff, a longtime Newton merchant, was dedicated in 1921. When construction costs exceeded Mr. Skiff's bequest to the city, F.L. Maytag challenged the citizens of Newton to pay the extra construction cost and offered to build the community a YMCA if the debt was paid off in a short period of time. The East 4th Street wrap has to do with various school properties in Newton. Old Central. The original school in Newton was called Old Central and it was built in 1871 on what is now the site of the Fairway Grocery Store. Initially, it had all grades, although most people tend to associate it um, with a high school. After a new high school was built in 1908, this building was used as a junior high school building until it was raised in 1917 to make way for the new school building. The old high school. What longtime Newton residents called the old high school was constructed in 1908 on the site of what is now the Newton Public Library. After the current high school on South 8th Avenue East was constructed in 1954, this building, the old high school, became the West Building of Central Junior High. Former students of the 1950s to the early 1980s will remember having three minutes to get from one building to the other, especially if their destination was room 27, the old study hall on the third floor of this building. The last classes in this building were held during the 1982-83 school year. Central Junior High. When Old Central was demolished in 1917, this school replaced it the following year. The building on the right is the old First Christian Church building. Because of declining enrollment in the age of both buildings, both this and the old high school building were torn down in 1983 and all junior high age students were moved to Berg Junior High. The Fairway Grocery Store now sits on the site of the old Central Junior High School. Washington School. Built in 1897 as West Elementary, 
It was added on to and renamed in 1926 Washington Elementary School, located at 719 First Avenue West. It was torn down to make room for an apartment building. The building was enlarged in 1926 with a brick addition on the south side and the original building was covered with white stucco.